Welcome back, golf fans. Got another Roto Pros PGA preview video for you here tonight. Uh, I'm Chris Durrell. Joining me, as always, is our other member of the PGA team, Dane Chenault. How's it going tonight, buddy? Going good. Ready for another fun week. We get uh, cut back after last week and a, another pretty big event. So, uh, ready to hop into it. We got a big stretch coming up. Yeah, and that leads us right into our review of last week. And it's always fun starting these shows when we're coming off some wins and we did it again we hit our third outright in the last four weeks uh the one week that we didn't hit the outright we had sam burns going into the final round as an outright so it was very close so we've been right there red hot since the start of the year where we were kind of cold so things are going really good right now i'll let you talk about your uh your win uh your couple of wins on the outrights for sure and then dive into how your dfs picks did yeah, so last Monday, the first thing that, that popped out to me was Morikawa's number, 55-1, to 1, when they posted it on DraftKings. So I instantly hopped on that, posted it in our Slack chat. And I didn't add any more bets um, at all until Wednesday night. Um, and I seen it was actually after you posted uh, your scale for Puerto Rico, and I hadn't even dug into Puerto Rico that much. Um, so I was like, man, I might have to get some action over there. Um, so the way I did it was I took five guys from Puerto Rico and round robin parlayed. So that's 25 different bets. Um, each player was parlayed with each um, other player in the opposite um, event. Um, very small. I, I made it where every bet won um, a thousand. So I actually went in and did every single bet. Um, so that was fun. Um, oh, had a basically just needed grace. I had a bunch of people besides Morikawa um, that were in that near the end. I had Brooks. I had Reed um, in the round robin. I had Morikawa and I had um, Hovland as well so just everywhere uh, and, hot and fire DJ was, yeah so so i had a pretty good chance to hit that one and then i was like if morikawa can just do it and i was actually out on the golf course and and i'd almost wrote off um grace yeah. winning when he was like on 10 through 10 or something i wasn't even looking and i saw something come through that he made an eagle on 17 holding out and i was like oh my gosh <laughs> so yeah it was a fun sweat um more cow got it done what a great week for him the, the main reason we were on him was because of the ball striking um from the week before he had changed those putting that putting grip i don't he calls it i can't remember what he called, saw grip or something yeah, saw grip not the claw but the saw or something <laughs> so um we were a little worried about that but hey he had a pretty good week putting so that was the only thing we needed to flip and it did and he won handily so that can always happen and that's why we target ball strikers yeah exactly he led the field in ball striking uh 12 i think it was no 11.9 strokes ball striking 9.6 on approach just absolutely incredible run he's been on with the irons um ball striking in general and then yeah he rebounded big time with uh, gaining four strokes putting so that was awesome the other thing a couple other things that i pulled away from that tournament uh victor hovland on friday was absolutely on fire he had six was going bogey free <laughs> six birdies into yeah. it was his 18th hole, but it was the ninth hole. He, he put up an eight. That was it just, he chipped it into the sage, not sage brush, but it was into the brush around the green. And then he chipped it over into the bunker and then he chipped it over again. He ended up with an eight. So for him to come back and finish, um, you know, with, so he, I guess Morikawa didn't leave the field in ball strike and it was Hovland at 12 point, uh, looks like 13 strokes actually. Um, he gained ball striking. So absolutely incredible on his part. He lost 2.1 strokes around the green. And I would, I would bet about one, at least one and a half of those came on that ninth hole on Friday there. So it was awesome to see him bounce back, uh, seeing those two youngsters. I kind of see those two guys as um, almost comparable. I know it's early, but like a, a Tiger Mickelson kind of duo going head to head as much as they did during that stretch back in the day kind of feels like that. I know they're not on, neither of them is on Tiger's level, but uh, that's just the kind of way that feels. The other thing that really stood out to me last week was Dustin Johnson. I don't know what the hell happened there, but he lost 10 strokes putting. Absolutely incredible. It's the most I could find on record for him. There's a few times he lost six or seven strokes putting. I've never seen 10. That's like Keegan Bradley bad. Uh, so it's uh, it was pretty incredible. 
seeing that, but I know me and you talked about earlier in the day in chat that hopefully this drives his number down for the players next week. That would I'd love to see him at 12 to 14. Kind of got a little bit of a side bet going on. I think he's going to come out at probably about 12 to 1. Um, I'm, I guess that's a little bit more of me hoping because I know you thought maybe he would uh, probably still be in single digits and maybe even only 10 to 1. So I kind of I think that's probably the way it'll go, but I, I really would. If it's 12 to 1, I, I'm definitely hammering <laughs> some money down on that for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> I, I've, like you, I've not seen DJ putt like that. That's <laughs> a big part of his game that he's really improved over this stretch of golf yeah. that he's been playing. So he even um, lost that was over crazy two strokes. Off I don't the know team. if it was just, yeah, yeah, he was not good off the tee either. <laughs> Crazy um, to see. But I don't know if it was the new course um, that he hasn't really seen probably before um, with the putting deal, but um, it was pretty crazy for sure. Oh, yeah. So with that, uh, before we jump in and talk about the course, <clears throat> before we talk about this week's event, I want to tell you a little bit about Rotopros. If you're not a member, you can go over to rotopros.com. This is our new look site here. Um, as you can see, we're compatible on – we don't have an app but we're making our site much more compatible for use on like iPads, uh, phones, any kind of tablet or phone, uh, pretty much. We're integrating our sheets in. Um, those are coming soon, that update. Um, right now you can find our articles on the homepage. Uh, you can also get our general strategy articles, NFL, NASCAR, PGA, NHL, NBA, MLB, all those up here. You can also come in and get a free trial right now with either of our packages, either weekly, monthly, or yearly. Um, that's going to get you a free three or five or seven days. And if you use promo code RP50, you'll get 50% off once that trial's up on your first payment. So if you're going for the yearly package, that's $150 a year cut in half. So you're only paying $75 American a year. It's a great deal if you want to get in on that. We cover multiple sports. We've got four coaches in there to help you, multiple coaches, pretty much for each sport. We we really uh, work well together and, and help each other with this, our, each other's main sport. So it goes really well. Come in, join our uh, family today, and uh, see some green screens like we've been seeing here the last few weeks. With that, let's dive into the event here. So um, we're on Bay Hill. So I'm going to jump over to the course here, and I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to let you talk a little bit about the course and what you're kind of expecting, um, the stats that you're looking for in your model this week. Yeah, so one of the things, first thing that comes to mind for me, or at least did this morning, was, was how long of a course it is, and it almost instantly takes you to bombers, but if you look back at the winners here, um, it's really not been that, other than Rory won here, but Hatton, you don't think, is not a bomber, but last year it played super tough, so maybe you move ahead, um, Bryson was top five there. Um, as well but before that Molinari and Fitzpatrick one two Leishman um, definitely not Bomber. neither one of the of them um, 2018 it was Rory he's he's a bomber and Bryson but Bryson wasn't what Bryson is now in 2018 as far as the way he plays um, he was little Bryson distance, but he was yeah it was little Bryson <laughs> in 2018 um, and then before that Leishman Kisner Hoffman, they are not bombers to say the least. Um, Chapel was in there before that. This is not a course that I'm going to rule out golfers just because they're not long. Um, it really becomes if they're not long, they're going to have to hit a little bit longer of irons, but they can definitely do that and, and show they've shown success um, doing it. So approach play is going to be big for me. Um, maybe it's a scenario where you run a couple different models as far as or at least add a couple different proximity ranges into the stats so that um, for bombers that guys you know hit it long you can look at a little bit shorter proximity mm -hmm. um, with the approaches and maybe for the shorter hitters you're looking at more around the 200 range um, just to see how good they are with the long arms but it's definitely a long course you got to score on the par fives um I think that's that's the main thing I'm looking for is approach um, this week. It, that's a big thing each week, but this place, especially when you're coming in um, from a long way, there's a bunch of water that you can get into trouble. So guys need to be in control of their, of their game so they can miss in the right spots, kind of like last week. Yeah, I agree. 
I'm I'm with you in the comparison of last week. Uh, there's water for one. I mean, Florida courses almost everyone has it, but uh, they can get in trouble off the tee. So I'm I'm looking instead of just weighing approach and off the tee, I'm looking at ball striking as a whole, and I've got it pretty high in my model this week. I think off the tee can be important because you can't get into trouble. Um, so one thing I noticed kind of when looking at stats from previous years is we see a lot of these guys in the top. Um, like you said, there's only a few guys that averaged last year. Uh, Bryson is 317, Rory McIlroy 313. Other than that, there was no other player in the top 20 that averaged over 300 yards off the tee. So we, I think we're going to see uh, a lot of placement stuff off the tee, kind of in that 280 to 290 range, because it, the water and some of these bunkers really get into play at like the 300 of that landing area, uh, around 300 and some of that stuff there. So I think uh, off the tee and approach are pretty pretty close for me this week. But long irons are huge. So I went back and I looked at the approach stats from Fantasy National um, at this course. And we've got 102,000 uh, approach sample size. So it's absolutely huge. I've, I haven't, I don't see this on many courses. We usually see usually two key areas. Um, but for instance, we've got 150 to 175 yards is 19% of the approach shots come from there. That would be your longer hitters. Um, because when you get to the 175 to 200, it's down to 17%, but you jump up to the 200 plus yard range, 29.2% of approach shots. You usually see in 25% is like the highest, uh, any one of these ranges. So long irons are huge for me this week. Uh, when, when you're actually breaking down the approach shots for off the tee, it's going to be like fairways gained. I'm going to look at a little bit. Um, so those are my two, when it comes down to ball striking par four scoring, of course, uh, we're going to want some par five birdie or better. There is some Eagles that can be had here. There's 29 last year, 37 the year before most of them coming on the 16th hole on that par five, <coughs> excuse me. So those are a few things definitely. Um, and another reason why I say off the tee and fairways gains, because the rough here is a little bit longer than we've seen. It's, it's a three, three inches on average uh, is what they listed at. And another thing that really popped out to me when looking at, you know, the last few years, last year, this course ranked, the hardest course, including majors, on tour in terms of scoring average. That was because we've seen a lot of wind. I believe it was moderate to heavy winds, like 15 mile, uh, about 12 to 20 mile an hour throughout the entire weekend. So we've seen some lower scoring last year. The year before, the wind wasn't as bad, but it's still ranked ninth. The year before, 15th. The year before, ninth. So it's been top 15 hardest course uh, in four straight and top 10 hardest in three of the last four. So definitely a hard course here. And like you said, if, if you can get it away with those long drives and be accurate with them, you're going to have a huge advantage. So, I mean, we've seen Rory do that. We've seen Bryce, and he was still hitting it pretty hard, um, you know, two years ago. But I'm not really going to be into him this year for some other reasons that we'll talk about uh, coming up. But that's pretty much what we're looking for here. This We've got Bermuda Greens. That's another thing I didn't mention here. So look at some Bermuda putters. But generally, I don't uh, weigh that too much either. But it, it's kind of like a tiebreaker between guys. So. That's the way I've got that. For stats this week, I talked about weather. Um, so this week, early on, I mean, this is going to change quite a bit. But as of now, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday are all like between 5 and 10 mile an hour. So not worried about weather whatsoever. Sunday showdown, we're going to want to stay tuned uh, for that because we're showing 15 to 20 mile an hour wind. So it could be an absolutely insane sweat on Sunday for all of our outrights that we're going to give you here shortly. <laughs> With that, um, I want to know... From you in this top range, we've obviously got Rory at the top. He has finished sixth or better here in four straight years. He won it back in 2018, like we talked about. I think he's going to be super chalk in this field. Um, so let's just kind of leave him out, I guess, unless you got something special to say about him, or maybe you're fading him. I, I don't know. We'll see. Who else do you like in this uh, top range? It's a little bit smaller this week. So that's uh, Tommy Fleetwood at 9K all the way up to Rory. Yeah, so the top range is super tough for me, and, and it's looking like I'm going to be leaning a lot more towards a balanced build this week because I like so many guys in the eight and nines. Um, you you could take a shot on any of these 10K-plus guys. Rory, you, said, you mentioned, has the history here, um, and he's playing decent. Um, Bryson has some history here, but um, I don't like the way that he's looking right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Honestly, Hovland, he doesn't have the history here, but he's got the current form. Um, I think he'll be fairly popular, even though that he's priced up this high. 12 to 1 odds, I, I thought was crazy to see. Yeah. Um, Patrick Reed, 
sure. <laughs> I, I just can't get excited about any of these guys, honestly. I think the guy that I like the most is actually Hatton, the winner here last year. Uh, 10,000. He's been playing some good golf as well. Um, so this is a place he could pop right back um, and, and get another top five for you. And that would pay off for DraftKings. So um, I like the the range right below this a lot more though. So I'm leaning much more towards balance. Okay. Yeah. I'm definitely on Rory and I'm the reason I'm going to be heavy on him. I like the way he's playing coming in. Um, I like the course history. The price is up there at 11.5, but there's some guys I'll talk about when we get into the 6K range and higher or lower 7K range that I really like multiple guys. And I think making a Rory lineup is not going to be too hard this week. But other than him, I'm with you on Hatton. I like Matthew Fitzpatrick again. He's got top 10s and two straight here, top 15s and three of his last four. He's coming in with some good form here as well. Um, he's hitting the ball really well. His ball striking has been on. Uh, someone who I, I'm going to be interested to see where the ownership lands is Sung Jae. He's been solid lately, but he hasn't really put up a, you know, he's 9,700, so he kind of needs that top 10. He hasn't had a top 10 in five straight events here, uh, one top 15 and two top 20s in that time. So he's going to be, I think, the pivot for me off of Fitzpatrick and Hatton. I think those two are going to command some ownership just right above him in that price range. So I'm definitely on Sanjay um, as a pivot there. But other than that, I'm with you going down to the next tier. So um I'm just going to talk about one guy that stood out to me right away. I haven't played cash games in a while. I've actually been, I played the 20 max last week and I actually had, I was up about three X there early Sunday, but I ended up only uh, about cutting even, um, ended up four X on the Puerto Rico. But uh, I think I might get back into cash this week because there is some, a really nice balanced build that I am liking here. And I like cash a little bit more in terms of tournaments. When we get the cut, I like to try and get those six out of six through the cut and play it that way. Jason Kokrak stands out. He's 10th in my model. He has finished uh, top 20 in two straight here and top 20 in five of his last seven, making the cut in six of those seven. He's only 8,100. Uh, the off the tee is what I like, so he's going to be accurate off the tee for you. He's going to be able to do that. And then I'm just going to take a quick look here at how his iron play is lately. He does rank 45th in this field in iron play uh, over the last 50 rounds, so that's not great. So I just wanted to look at the more recent yeah, he's lost strokes in his last two at the Genesis in Mexico, but still finished with a T32 and T9 because the off the tee and the putting. He's gained 12 strokes putting over those two events. So if he kind of balances the approach and that putting out, that's going to come back to life a little bit. Um, I think, you know, we're maybe looking at a, a top 25 out of him, I think we're going to see. And I think that's excellent at 8,100 if you're looking at a nice solid uh, floor cash game play in that mid range. And I think he has some upside at that price as well. Who you targeted in this? Uh, high seven, eight K range. Yeah. So um, just going back up just a little bit more, you mentioned Fitzpatrick. He, he's probably the, the guy I'm going to start my lineups with. Um, love I love his history here and I love the way that he's trending. Um, so I'll just throw that in there on top of what you've already said. And M, um, the only thing that worries me about M is he's lost some strokes on approach the last yes. two events, which is, not like him, but he was third here a year ago. He could find something for sure. Um, so he would be the pivot. Um, Fleetwood at 9K is, is one of my favorites, third here in 19. Um, I don't mind the way that he played last week. He, he could not putt at all. He lost six strokes putting. He was up there rivaling DJ. Yeah. Um, but he was all right on approach. Um, maybe he can find some good vibes this week uh, back at a place that he likes. Um, and then Molinari and Zalatoris are, are the next two. So that's kind of the way I'm approaching starting my builds, I think, this week is jamming in at like three from this eight and nine K range at least. Um, so Molinari, I, I love the way that he's playing. He had one off week and it was the week that I used him <laughs> at <laughs> yeah. Pebble Beach. But other than that, eighth at the Amex, 10th at Farmers, and eighth at Genesis. So three top tens. In his four events of the calendar year, he's gained on approach and um, off the tee in all three of those events. Um, I just love the way that he's playing, and he loves this place. I mean, he was the winner he here um, in 2019, and before that he had three top tens, um, and has. I don't think he's missed a cut here unless he played here before 2010. Um, yeah. So, love – Molinari and was surprised with his odds that he's priced in the eights. I mean, there's some guys right above him that are 
Um, I wouldn't have blinked if he was 9,200. So I think we're getting a little bit of value there. So he's one of my favorites. And then Zalatoris, we we mentioned these guys like Hovland and Morikawa. If you go back and watch some of the first videos that we did together last year, um, we had that conversation about which one of those was going to be better long term for yep. sure. Um, I don't. I can't remember what we even talked. I know we talked about that. Um, Hovlin and Morikawa were definitely going to be more consistent. <laughs> I do remember that um, than Wolf um, yeah. when we compared those three. But this is another guy that's going to throw his name into the rings. Alatoris has been absolutely on fire. I love the way he's playing. He's going to break through one of these weeks. I mean, he lost five strokes putting last week and was twenty second. That's crazy. Um, yeah, uh, the and it's. I don't, it's just a volatile thing for him. Um, putting, I mean, he gained five strokes the week before. Um, and then before that, he was flat for two weeks. So it's just kind of an on and off thing. Maybe he didn't like the greens uh, last week, but um, this will be his debut here. I think the course fits him with the way he plays tee to green. So I really like Zalatoris as well. Um, I'll let you start that 7K range. For sure. Uh, back, piggybacking on Zalatoris, I've got him locked in here as one of my early clicks for outright as well. Um, I waited yeah. a little bit too long. He was 50, I think, this morning. I've got him at uh, 45 now, but he's definitely one I'm putting in there. And, you know, when I see a guy who's ball striking it well, like you talked about since he came over, he's gained in his last four, last, well, let's even go back to the Shriners um, in that was October. He gained 4.7 strokes at the Shiner, Shriners. This is on a pro, yeah, sorry, approach. Farmers, 2.3 strokes. Uh, waste management, 4.6. And then he lost 0.5 at the at the AT&T Pro-Am when you used him. But then at the Genesis, 3.4. And the uh, WGC last week, 3.8. So when I see a guy gaining strokes, and then last week, what else was impressive and saved him after losing five strokes putting, he gained over two strokes in every single area. He was excellent around the green, the approach, the off the tee. So the fact that he gained five strokes putting the week before, and, you know, there's a lot of variance there in his putting. Well, that just tells me when he's ball striking at that good, when he gets that putt, this is the same story as we talked about with yeah. Morikawa last week. He had lost five or six strokes putting. And we said with that ball striking like that, when he, we talk about ball strikers all the time that maybe aren't trending or trending down in putting or maybe coming off a bad week of putting, it just takes that one week to be field average or just above field average in putting when you're ball striking it that well to put a top 10 together or top five, or at least be on that leaderboard on Sunday. And he, you know, for his price, I absolutely love it. And for outright as well. So that's my thoughts on Zalatoris. I'm a hundred percent with you going down into that seven K range a little bit, two guys that stand out to me right away. Um, you know, going back to the co-crack thing, looking at guys that I solid floor guys that I want for cash games in a balanced build like this, this week, Lanto Griffin, we talked about him last week. He was super cheap last week. He came through for us with a T22. That was awesome. He's finished T36 here last year. So he's coming in with form. He's got a little bit of course history experience here. Um, that ball striking. So I'm on him for sure. And then Cameron Tringali, maybe not as much. He hasn't played here in five years. But when he did play here, he made three of his last four cuts, uh, three straight actually. I'm not even sure. 2012 might have been a made cut 75th when they allowed more into the cut back then. But what I'm really looking at from him here, why I like him more than just that uh, course history, is kind of the recent form, really. He's 11th in strokes gain approach in this field um, and 5th in strokes gain par 5. So he makes up, you know, a lot of strokes on those par 5s. He can get you those eagles, 7th and birdie or better gain. And he's been putting really well as well. So he kind of checks all the boxes for me. So those are two guys I'm definitely keen in on in those mid range. Anyone for you? Yeah, so Lanto was, was my first one for sure. Nice. Um, on him last week, I think our, our guys over at Roto Pros are definitely going to get tired of playing him. He's one <laughs> of those guys that is like a domin for me last year. Um, I'm going to keep riding him. Four, he gained four strokes on approach last week, um, finished in 22nd. He was just solid pretty much all around. Um, so I'll for sure be going back there. A um, couple got name value guys that I wonder what people are going to do with. Rose was god awful last week, and I used him. Um, yeah, obviously he's got good history everywhere. Though at this point, it's almost like the guy right below him, Ricky, 
Um, got good history everywhere, but what do we do with him? Ricky, I am not playing Ricky. <laughs> this will be the week that he goes off. Um, 20th last time out, but if you really dig into those stats, he was horrid tee to green um, and putted his um, – the lights out and, and that is not what he had been doing so you could look at that a couple different ways you could think all right he figured out the putting now maybe the ball striking comes back around but i will not be doing that so <laughs> um he had to key up the ricky win um a few guys below that so we've mentioned a lot of euro guys and and really the reason we see a lot of euro guys do well here is mainly because there's a bunch more of them in the field mm-hmm. but it it tells you that this is a course that they can do fairly well on. Um, so you can take a shot on like a Bazooden hoot. Uh, he was 18th here last year. I don't really love the way that he um, hit it. I think he played last week, right? Yeah, I he did. His... I didn't look at his stats, but uh, he's – I don't he's... think it was that like... – yeah, he lost 2.3 off the tee and lost one on approach. He was good around the green. So you could take a shot on him. Um, I like the bottom of this 7K range a lot. Um, so maybe what I'll end up doing is jamming in those eight and nines and then dropping down to maybe grab one in the upper sevens, but then fill it out in the bottom sevens. I don't mm-hmm. know how much I'll be dri- dripping into the 6K range because Corey Connors is definitely uh, – he does not have the history here, but his ball striking just keeps telling me that he's going to – his game can translate anywhere – um last time out at the genesis he missed the cut he was fine off the tee just couldn't putt the first couple rounds but before that at the waste management 17th 37th at the farmers um to start this year so i think he is a good value down there at 7300 alex norin is another guy um he's made two of three cuts here um and i really like norin He's been popping on these leaderboards early on in tournaments, but what I really like about him is that the Genesis, he gained four strokes on approach, and that kind of turned around uh, from what he had been doing. He'd been losing uh, one stroke on approach and off the tee there for a couple weeks um, through the whole tournament, but he gained four on approach and one off the tee at the Genesis finishing 12th. So I really like that. Um, 7,300, I'll, I'll be going there. And then last guy is Luke List. Um, he's been very good here, 10th, 7th, and 17th. Um, and he's been playing pretty well um, too. So definitely he's good in these Florida events. I think the Honda Classic was one that he almost grabbed a win. Um, before the Genesis, when he missed the cut um, a couple weeks ago, he was 30th, 10th, and 21st. Um, early this year. So I'll be going there as well in the slow 7K range. No, I like that. So a couple things uh, with a couple of them. List, I'm definitely with you. He's got the course history. He's done really – and you'd think of him as being like a bomber for the most part. So a course like this with a lot of water, you wouldn't – you know, and a lot of danger like that, you wouldn't think he'd pop like that. But uh, 17th, 7th, and 10th in his three appearances here. And the ball striking has been great. So he's one of those guys that pops in ball striking. He's gained strokes both off the tee and approach in four of his last five. He's actually, he has, he was zero strokes gained putting last week, which is like plus 10 for everyone else because he's usually not a great putter, (laughs) but seeing him gain 1.6 the week before zero last week, that's, that's a trending in the right direction for him coming into event that he's done well at. I'm with you hundred percent. Um, I like him a little bit more than Connors for one reason. I like the ball striking for both of them. They're both up and down with their putters. Um, but where they, the separation between them for me is is Luke List is 11th in proximity from 200 plus yards, looking at those long irons, while Connors is 68th. Um, and there's about a stroke and a half gained in between there. So that's the one thing. If you know if you're splitting hairs and, and you you're down to one or the other, that's where I'm at with those two. Um, Chris Kirk stands out to me. He's 11th in my model. He's got tremendous course history here. Top 15s in three of his last four. He didn't play here last year. And since he has returned, um, let's just look at his 2021 at the Sony. He finished second. That was tremendous. Gained 4.8 strokes on approach. At the Amex, he finished T16, 4.7 strokes gained on approach. Uh, He missed the cut. He was terrible at the waste management. And then he turned that around the very next week at uh, Pebble Beach and gain strokes in every single area and finish T16 again. So T16 or better in three of his last four. 
Uh, he's got course history here. Pretty good with the long iron, so I'm definitely going to be on him. Um, and then we'll scroll down here. And where the heck is he? Uh, Wyndham Clark. So he missed the cut here last year. I believe it was top, top 65 and ties again last year. I have to go back and check. Either way, he either made it by finished dead last of the guys that that made the cut or didn't miss the cut. But he's got experience here either way. What stands out for me with Wyndham Clark coming in is that uh, iron game. He's gained strokes on approach in two straight. And the putter, he's just got a very consistent putter. Um, so I think that gives you guys that have a consistent putter like that, for me, give you a nice floor uh, when you're down in this low 7K range. So those are two guys that I'll be loading up on in my Rory lineups because I think they both have a nice floor as well as upside for their price at 7K. And then dipping down below that, love Matthew, Matthew Naismith, uh, 25th in my model. He just barely made the cut last year. He's got top 25s and three straight coming in. So he's got form. He's got uh, experience here. I don't want to call it uh, good experience possibly last year, but I think that's definitely going to help. And he's playing a lot better right now than he was coming in last year. So that's going to be huge for me too. But the biggest thing for him, his last four events, strokes gained approach, 6.6, 4.5, 5.6, 3.1. Absolutely insane uh, with those irons. So if he can putt even, you know, gain a stroke or two putting, I think he's going to be a top 10. He's probably going to be a top 10 bet for me. And I think the number is going to be pretty good. My book hasn't released top 10s or fives or 20s yet. Um, so I'm not real sure there. He's not a guy I'm going to bet outright, but I'll be looking at that top five, top 10, top 20 numbers on Matthew Naismith. Even for Kirk um, Kirk and Wyndham Clark, I'll be looking at top 20, even pushing top 10 for those guys, but uh, definitely for Naismith on the top 10 side of things. And then one more guy, um, Patrick Rogers. He played well last week um, at Puerto Rico. He's got top 25s and two of his last three here three of his five events here and he's made the cut in four or five so that's awesome at 6800 love seeing that with the form coming in uh trending a bit sorry i said one more guy if you really want to reach and you want to go superstars and scrubs i'll take a shot with will gordon um 21st and 27th in his last two events this is his first time here so it could be just one of those 104 uh, that wouldn't be 140th because there's not that many players in the field but um 123rd 123 man field so it could be dead last or top 25 I don't really see much in between with him, but uh, I'll mix him in. If I'm doing a 20 max again, probably get him in at least one or two with my uh, high-end Stars and Scrubs lineups. Is there any other value guys or Stars and uh, Scrubby guys that you're looking at this week? No. It's tough Not, down here. I really don't want to get down in this range, honestly. Um, Neesmith is definitely my favorite, like you said, just because of the form. Um, but – it's ugly down here in, in my eyes. I know Keith Mitchell's got good form here, but he has missed the cut by like a lot of strokes the last three times out. <laughs> um, so not going to be going there for me. Um, how is Danny Willett playing? He was 18th here last year. Willett, he yeah, he's always here? interesting. Hey, Like he's outside the top 100 in approach. So I'm assuming I'm just clicking on his name here to look. Yeah, he's lost strokes on approach in about think... seven straight coming oh, in so nice okay that's again this is just reiterating why i don't want to be down here <laughs> honestly yeah it's um, ugly. there's just not a lot to find um, will gordon like you said i mean you can take a shot on him um in a super stars and scrubs if you want to maybe jam two uh 10k guys but i can't find one that i really want to endorse so no um yeah, that'll be it for me. <laughs> yeah, that's I'd maybe I'd think about maybe like a Sep Strack. He's gonna be like a one, two percent guy. Not in love with it. He hasn't been playing great lately. He missed the cut here last year. Sun Kang's got back to back top tens at this event, but he's not playing great. Uh 152nd, 120th, 63rd, 67th. So the form is really what we find down here. I guess another guy, he does kind of stand out in terms of form. He was in my lineup for the Puerto Rico last week, it was Cameron Percy at sixty five hundred. 21st uh, t7 last week at the puerto rico this is a bit stronger field obviously but t21 the week before that as well he's he 55th in my model so i mean not much really stands out there outside of his proximity um is really good so when you look at his approach shots the long iron play is really good with cameron percy so that's kind of what stands out there uh, with him but other than that i'm going to be mixing in those few guys that i talked about and that's pretty much it but i do like the stars and scrubs it sounds like a little bit more than you i do like the balance build and i will do some of those balance builds that you were talking about but i think for the most part 
uh, mix and Rory with like Molinari in the 8700s or Kokrak 8100 or Lanto and Tringali and then just coming down and grabbing like Kirk Clark mixing in Naismith Rogers and you know a little bit of Gordon and Percy uh, I think I can even probably get uh, Rory McIlroy and like Hatton or Fitzpatrick in a lineup build like that so I haven't started building yet. I was just kind of going over the course and stuff like that. So I'm going to start that tonight and we'll, we'll discuss that a little bit more um, in chat as we get closer to lock. Um, anyone that's really standing yeah, out to you is, Oh, go ahead. What about Munoz? He, uh, he had been struggling a little bit, but he did gain, he was flat off the tee last week at, at the WGC, but he gained five on approach. Yeah. Um, doesn't have the history here but for the price 67. You could take a shot on him. So I'll go Nee Smith and, and Munoz is my second one down here. And that's I it like for it. me. When he's on with when Munoz is on with his irons, even when he's losing uh strokes around the green and putting, he's still a top twenty-five yeah. candidate with those irons. So I, I definitely love that. Uh, my one and done lean right now um is going to be probably Molinari. I think that's kind of where I'm locked into right now. And if not him, probably Tyrrell Hatton. It's kind of down to those two for me. Yeah, the two for me would be Fitzpatrick and Molinari for sure. So um, we're going England or Italy? My two top, top end favorites this week. Right on. I really Yeah, like we're, we're going Molinari for hours. <laughs> awesome. Absolutely love it. We had Rom last week, did we not? Yeah. Yeah, Oof. that wasn't fun. That wasn't <laughs> fun after our uh after our win the week before. But hey, what do you do? You move on. We got a long season ahead of us, so <clears throat> thanks for tuning in everyone uh one more thing before we go uh if anyone's still tuned in here we have a free roll this week for for our members in chat we do this each and every week we have one or two free rolls all you have to do like the video comment below with your pick to win with your favorite outright with your favorite dk or fan duel play doesn't really matter just your favorite uh play and then uh provide me your dk handle and i will send out the link to the free rolls each week we give away a uh, five dollar credit as well as leaderboard points. So the winner gets five, second place gets three, and third place gets one. So once you get to a certain threshold of leaderboard points, we give out another credit on another $15 credit on account. It's pretty much a way for our members can go ahead and earn uh, their memberships for free just by playing in our free rolls and helping us out, uh, checking out these videos and stuff like that. So make sure to check that out. And again, if you're not a Rotor Pros member, go and get your free trial over at rotorpros.com, click that yellow sign up button and use RP50 as your promo code and you'll get 50% off on your first payment. Thanks for joining me, Daniel. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, any last words? Yeah, one last thing, since we're trying to get uh, more people to tune into these, we, we put a lot into them and, and try to give as much info as we can. Um, if you've hung around this long, I, let's, let's give out a few bets, um, even though people watching it may not be members. Most probably are, but... Um, the ones that I locked in today, I, I've locked in four Fitzpatrick at 25 um, to one Fleetwood at 44, I think is what I got 40. No, I got 45 to one um, Molinari 35 to one and Zalatoris. I still got at 50. All those Ooh, I nice. think are still available on DraftKings, except for Molinari. I think he moved down to 30. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's moving up fast. I'm glad I got him at 35 here. Yeah, no, that, yeah. you got it right there, folks. We've been red hot with these outrights. Um, where I'm going to post more top 10s, top 5s, so pretty much what I'm doing every week. And it all depends. If, I like, if I'm going to bet Rory, I'm not going to bet Rory, Hatton, Fitzpatrick, Molinari. You're just kind of losing money. We've talked about this in the past. So I'm with you. I'm, Molinari would be my top guy. The other guy I mentioned here um, was Zalatoris. I like that number. I got him at 45 to 1. Those are two I'm looking at right away. I'm, I don't know if I'm going to do Fitz yet. And I kind of want to track the number with Sungjae. I think he's, he can get a win if he puts that putter together and gets those irons back on track. But other than that, I might just take some long shot bets here. Um, like maybe a Lanto at 91, somewhere in there. And just throw a couple. I mean, we got close with Sam Burns a few weeks ago at 100 to 1. So I might grab a couple of those 100 to 1s. Um, Lanto's definitely one that stands out to me. What do you feel about Corey Connors as like a long shot to win? It feels like with his ball striking, he has one good week where he gains three or four strokes, kind of like Morikawa did last week with his putter. If, if he jumps and gains even a stroke per round, all, you know, throughout Thursday to Sunday, I think he has a chance. And 
I can see him in the winner's circle. It's tough, but I mean, 110 to one, I'll, I would take a, a small shot, maybe like a half unit or a quarter unit or something like that. Yeah, maybe he's a better outright than a, a DraftKings play because if he does click, he's going to get you at least each weight or, or add the top five to it because if he does get that putter going, he, he can definitely get up there in the top five. Um, yeah, yep. I like that. And then other than that, I'm going to post a few. When I get my numbers, I'm going to check the top tens, top fives, top twenties. Um, so for my outright, something I like to mention every week is like for Molinari at 34 or 35 to one, whatever you're betting them at, anyone like outside that 30 to one number, I like to either each way, if you have that option, which is just a second bet of the exact same amount as your outright, but you get the top five, but a quarter of the odds. So it's pretty much like betting a top five on that player just to cover your cover your butt if he doesn't win, but he's, you know, finished the second or third. I did that last week with Brooks Kepka. Um, that definitely worked for me um, because I had Morikawa and, and Kepka. I had them both as a top five and a top 10. Um, so I was kind of covered there to at least get, you know, break even at the end of the week. So that's kind of what we're kind trying to do. We're not going to pick winners every single week, but if we can mix in some top fives, top tens and top twenties, kind of like cash game plays, um, we can at least try and break even and make it on to the next week. Because what Dane has done here with his two wins already this year is it doesn't matter if you win early in the year. It doesn't matter if you win late in the year. One tournament win at the end of the year can make up for a whole year of betting. What Dane's done, though, he has won multiple times early in the year. Um, so he can take a little bit more risks and, uh, you know, throw a few more in there. So join our team over at Roto Pros. Get in on the fun. Um, we'll see you in chat, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. Talk to you later.